Hi guys and welcome to a new edition of Art Life with Jonan Bogdan. It's getting toward the end of the year and we've got things to talk about. Come on in. Hi, I'm John and this is Bogdan. Join us on our journey as we figure out how to earn a living as artists, introduce you to those we meet, and share what we learn along the way. So guys, this week it wasn't a very visual sort of week. And there was a lot going on, but nothing visually interesting to film and to show. Uh, it was a lot of um, preparations for uh, the uh, upcoming exhibitions, opening reception of You'll Do. Uh, there was a lot of uh, technical details about the exhibition at Silver Street Studios that John was involved with. Uh, there was a lot of carpet changing at home again um, so that was another full day of work and really uh, what else happened nothing visual really that's all right it doesn't mean nothing happened and, uh... and that's why we thought this would be a great uh, episode to kind of uh, review all the great things we've done this year yeah I'm, I'm toward the end of the year we've only got a couple of weeks left and I'm working feverishly to, to do all those kinds of end of the year things that you have to do in a small business. So I'm working on all the receipts and, and getting all of the uh, bank statements reviewed and, and, and actually creating a system to turn this all over uh, at the end of the year uh, to storage because we have to keep those records uh, for, and get taxes ready. So yeah, there's a lot going on, nothing that, uh, that would look good on camera. But one of the things in, in reviewing all of that stuff was remembering all the things that we've done this year. And, you know, last year with uh, the death of my parents and uh, just the, the massive amount of, of kind of um, exhibitions that we participated in online and, and in person, uh, this year was, was less dramatic, but probably more important in, in the long run. I think the things that we did were bigger. Uh, yeah, I mean, this was the year for me uh, when I f finally uh, um, stopped being shy of trying things out. So as a matter of fact, I, I created a uh, big number of pieces based on painting, yeah. uh, uh, mixed media, and really explore all kinds of uh, um, ideas, combining uh, acrylic with photography, combining um, cement with photography. I created these sculptural pieces this year. Um, they had a huge uh, uh, positive feedback for all these people who uh, passed by into my studio uh, over time uh, during this year. And uh, one has sold already. Thank you, Jessica. And. Um, yeah, um, a lot has happened, uh, artistically speaking. Yeah, and, and the thing that you probably wouldn't know to say is I, I observe in him that he's much happier when he's doing that kind of work. It doesn't mean that he doesn't enjoy doing the photography, but the photography is really about editing at that point because the pictures have already been taken and you're but I, being creative. I got a little bored, you know, just to create a beautiful picture. I feel like I need to add something else to it, something that makes it unique. That's why I paint over or I cut it or I um, rip it in pieces and then place it together so that it makes it a little different than, than regular photography. Right. And so if you're, if you're feeling more satisfaction and, and, and uh, kind of feeding that creative, that creative beast, then uh, that's got to be a good thing. So I'm delighted for you and, and myself. I mean, I have, I think the biggest thing for me this year was the, the launch of Panka Marga. So I did my, my started my legacy series and uh, that was huge. That was a huge opening. It was my first uh, solo exhibition and uh, I think it was very successful. Uh, there's still some, some left, but uh, that's okay. I'm gonna be building on that. Uh, so yeah, it's been a good year for me too. Uh, I feel like I've, I've stepped up a notch this year from last year. Me too. Yeah. It, me it, too, it, I feel like I, I, 
I grew up, you know, I, I'm on a next step now, yeah, yeah. which if I wouldn't had the, the, the courage to, to start exploring the things are, were in my head without really being afraid of what if I destroy it, what if it doesn't work, it's just do it, just, just do, do it, it and yeah. try it. I yeah. mean, it is what it is. And um, then I learned, over doing this this year, I learned that you can never destroy a thing. You can always, it may not look like the way you planned, mm -hmm. it will look different and, and it's still good. Yeah, and I just feel like, and, and I don't mean this in any kind of arrogant way, that, that we're just taking the next step. We're getting better at what we're doing. We're getting more confident in what we're doing. We're getting more professional in the way we're presenting uh, and, and approaching our, our, our creative business. And so, yeah, I think those are, to me, was a very, very important step for us this year. Um, what else? Uh, another uh, good things that happened this year for me was uh, the participation in the fun fair, yeah, both in Guadalajara and Mexico City. Um, uh, it was an honor enough to get in. I mean, I applied and never got in, and I know other people who did as well. So. Yeah, and um, on both occasions, I had a, a huge... Uh, feedback from the Mexican public, uh, especially Guadalajara public, that was uh, amazing. Um, Mexico City was just as good, mm -hmm. uh, but I thought, uh, looking back, that Guadalajara was even better for me. I don't know why, maybe the, the, the Guadalajarian public is more uh, in love uh, with art, I don't know. Well, I, th I think it was a, a different crowd, right? I mean, we got, it seems like we got a lot more people in Guadalajara though they weren't probably as uh, well-versed in art, but they had more questions. Uh, the people in, Me in Mexico City are very sophisticated. They're, they're used to going to art shows and, and big fairs like that. And so they're, I don't know, seem... More less, selective maybe? I don't know. Less, uh, no, less chatty about it when they moved around. But I think you, I however, think you had a really good presence at that Yeah, show. however, uh, I, I look good, I had... Um, nice reviews, um, I can't complain about anything, I sold a piece um, and you know how hard it is to, to sell a piece of art. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And I, you know, that brings to mind, I mean, we've done lots of exhibitions and, and I, I know last year we went a little crazy sending off for every show and we and Bogdan got into a lot of them and uh, got some recognition through that. But, uh, and this year we've done the same, oh. but far fewer. We, t we tried various territories last year because it was the year of COVID and we, mm -hmm. we somehow got stuck at home, didn't know what to do. There was the beginning of these online shows mm -hmm. and I applied to various of them. I got in many of them, uh, but it, uh, you know. At the end of the day, I mean, uh, you know, we, we, I know you had a big thing in Hungary and that was a lovely show. It was an in-person show. And it was like, and it's over, and eh, there's nothing to really show for it other than it looks good on a resume. And it's, I guess, great that people in Hungary saw his work. But uh, this year, we're much more selective, and it actually, we probably got more response this year than last year, even though we did fewer of them. Because you got some sort of recognition in New York, right? Right, so I, I participated in I think I got in every show I applied for. Mm -hmm. um, this was at the Center for Photographic Art in New York, New York mm -hmm. where I in the, um, submitted several images from Inheritance and as is uh, was selected and not only selected, got a mention from the uh, curator mm -hmm. and that was lovely. And then same pictures went to the VA show this year, which is the Visual Art Alliance in Houston. And I got accepted into that one as well, which is a, a feat. Yeah. And I believe uh, I apply for a, another open call in Poughkeepsie, New York. Yes. And the same picture as is was selected as well. So who knew this? That, that piece has gotten a lot of love over the yeah. year. Yeah. So you guys, you're going to have to buy it. Yes, yeah, somebody I has to buy it. I'm really serious now. You're it's the have most to have traveled it. photo. I don't want to submit it again for any <laughs> of the shows. I'm tired of it. But I do think, okay, we were looking at the idea of how, how lucrative, how, how important is it 
to do these kinds of exhibitions and particularly international fairs. And we were talking about, is it worth doing? I mean, we didn't make our money back, but they were important to do. So I'm, I'm kind of torn as to... Well, um, I know what you mean. Uh, I think we spend more money than we make money out of these trips. Certainly. But however, how else would I break or show 12 pieces of artwork to the Mexican public or to Mexico City or in Guadalajara. There's no way I can do that by myself. And, the, and there's no way to gauge now what will happen because of that, you know? I mean, you ran into Patricia Conde, mm -hmm. you ran into Rodrigo, who's doing lots of marketing. Who knows what that kind of exposure will bring? So yeah, is it worth doing? Probably. Is it, is it gonna change our lives uh, immediately? Probably not. No, but I think it's, at the end of the day, it's a good thing. It's mm -hmm. like an investment in, in your career, and this is what I, the way I see it. You know, we have some friends, uh, uh, Adam Land, uh, Jumper Maybach, uh, who just went to the Art Basel uh, in, uh, in Miami, uh, the Spectrum show. And they were talking about, you know, the benefit of doing that kind of show. Mm -hmm. And they had very much the same experience that we did, that... No, it's that not something you make a lot of money when you go there, but, you know, I know in, in the case of Adam, he said that someone who saw him at Art Basel went to his website, found another piece that they loved, and bought that, and he's shipping it off. So those are the kinds of, I think, relationships you build at those kinds of fairs. I'm glad you talk about this Art Basel. Mm -hmm. Another piece of news I, 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 I heard from there is like, a lot of NFT. Oh man, it's changing, yeah. A lot of purchases happened with NFT money. Mm -hmm. um, you were trying at some yeah. point. Now, uh, one of the other things I think we should be grateful for this year is this the communities that we were involved in. You know, we have our own community just from being at Silver Street Studios and Sawyer Yards. Now that's a, a huge because we're around lots of other artists every day, all of whom are, are growing and, and uh, their businesses as well. But I'm also involved uh, in the, uh, doing the art lab at, uh, with uh, PRPGMX in Mexico City with Michael Swank. And that has allowed me to do some really interesting things. In fact, I participated in two art labs this year, uh, which really helped me to build my own craft, which is the reason I, I'm interested in it. Uh, apart from our business and things like that. I want to get better as an artist. And uh, so I did, I did both of those, and that has its own community. And uh, I also work with a, a group out of Berlin, uh, Stefan van Quick, uh, who has a group called um, Artists Stop Being Poor. And so there's probably 400 people in his kind of network, and they put together an NFT show uh, for the members. And I was one of the ones who submitted and, and have my first NFT. No one's ever bought it, but, but it's out there for like zero zero point no point zero zero one Ethereum. So if you've got any crypto, we talk about being members of groups and Mexico. We also have done a lot of tenant show here in yes. Houston, mm -hmm. uh, and not only in the um, the Silver Street Studios, but uh, I had. Uh, VAA actually is based in Houston, and as well I had, um, I believe, the 37th Juliet exhibition at Archway, I don't remember the, uh, the number, uh -huh. where I got again this year with the Petal Lines, and that was lovely. Uh, and I that's mean, a jury show as well. Yes, it is a jury as show. Is, uh, mm -hmm. uh, VAA. And um, so yeah, we, we are uh, looking globally, but we are focused uh, into our hood as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's been great, a uh, great learning experience. One of the things at Silver Street, I uh, actually volunteered and am, am on the uh, exhibition committee. So we just put together this massive exhibition, our first one is a, our committee. People have done it before us. But, uh, and, and we just launched this one called uh, Without Limits. It's, uh, there were what? 62 artists and something like almost 200 works that we uh, 
had to co coordinate the show, we had to market it, we had to get with the artists, we had to get the work, we had to hang the work, we had to light the work, we had to, we just had our reception this last week, which is one of the other reasons we've just been running. So that is now officially up and opened, uh, and it's a lovely show, uh, and a huge learning curve for me to have been part of that kind of planning and execution of a major exhibition. So that's been great. So another major thing that happened this year, it's the beginning of the uh, weekly art charts, yes. which uh, we approached, I believe last week, there was the 38th episode, which means we have done this now for 38 weeks, um, half an hour every week, every Thursday morning. Uh, and we've done this a, for a year. A major, a major, take over right mm -hmm. and so we really went we really went digital because we went I mean uh, video that we have now done this particular edition of the uh, uh, art life for a year which is big it's a big deal for us we haven't really missed I know it's not quite a year but pretty close and, and then we added the art chat and we know that all not all of them exciting but you yeah. know what it's excited enough for us of course they're all exciting why wouldn't they be uh, so yeah, we've really launched in and then I, I have kept up with the blog and, and my podcast. So we're doing a lot. Uh, because of COVID, we were like, no, we're not, we're not laying down for this. We're going to keep moving. Uh, you know, and another thing we've done is we've really developed uh, some relationships with collectors. Yeah, this is what I was trying to say next. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, another, unlike previous years when we had random people buying art from us. Um, this year we really um, developed some serious collectors that some of them become friends, like Tom and Frank. Mm -hmm. And um, they are, how would I say this? They're more stable. Um, the people that are watching us now, um, they're interested in what we're doing. Um, it's like a feel-good kind of... Uh... Yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful thing and, and uh, that the fact that that they are interested in us is great and we love that. We need friends and, and uh, that that's always feels good. But that they're also interested in our art and our art careers is, is almost... It's very humbling and, and uh, very, very honored. Uh, and then they introduce us. I mean, I met Sandra through Tommy and uh, uh, and you even thought and I went I went and taught one of her uh, for one of her classes because she was doing something on uh, religion and art finding God through art and she had me come as a guest speaker now, I'm not sure the kids had the best time but I had a great time <laughs> and it was that kind of relationship that I would never probably have made with Sandra uh, had I not met her through Tommy and now she's a friend and, uh, uh, so we keep going but I wanna, before we change no, sure. the subjects, I want to say a thank you to Kim Harrison. Oh my God. She is an artist, she's a friend, she's a big collector of mine. And this last week she came in and she got a major piece for her home. She just renovated her home and she said she was looking on this piece for a long time, but it wasn't, she couldn't find the right time because the house wasn't ready. But now the house is ready and she got a major piece for me um, and that was lovely. Thank you, Kim, if you watch us. Mm -hmm. uh, Absolutely, and thanks for all your friendship and support. Yeah. And then, you know, you, you start naming people, you then feel bad about people you'll forget, you know, but uh, yeah. there are lots and lots of people we're well, meeting who are becoming really, really important. But I mean, there are lives. very important people that they didn't have, they're not yet collectors of ours, but they're watching us mm -hmm. and they are supporting us and um, it's just as good as you know having knowing that somebody is believing in you. Wow! Yeah, the other thing we're doing is we're kind of trying to develop the next stage, which is uh, we're doing these uh, monthly exhibitions. We're starting this month, in fact, this week, uh, and uh, with our first one, which is a Christmas-themed holiday theme, and we're calling it "You'll Do," which I think is hilarious, and. Uh, so what we're doing is, is we're taking my studio and turning it more into a gallery than a working studio. Bogdan's is now 
even more full of junk because some of my stuff has had to go there. But uh, we're having a monthly curated exhibition of our work. We'll see how that uh, develops. We're having our first uh, kind of reception this set Friday. How many people have you invited? Oh, uh, about 400. I hope they don't all come. <laughs> I hope well. Why not? That would be awful. I'd be lovely to see everybody. But as I say, as we start wrapping up the end of the year, uh, we need to look at our goals and objectives. And every every January, we do our own little goals and objectives retreat. Uh, I don't know where we'll go this year. Yeah. Last year, we went to Galveston. And I think we should go to Portugal. Yeah. First, we need to sell some art, and then we'll go to Portugal. I think we should go to Portugal. we got to figure out where we're, where we're going to go in our lives. So it's been a, a great year, and uh, we still have a little bit to go. In fact, we're going to do some holiday things with, uh, as, as Bogdan mentioned, with Frank and Tommy and, their, uh, and, and Keith uh, in Louisiana. And we're going to go visit him and his family this Christmas. Should be a lovely, lovely time. We hope that you guys have a lovely week and lovely Christmas. And uh, whatever time, whatever time of the year you're watching this, you need a little Christmas now. Remember, if you like the content, give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell to be reminded when we put out new content. Other than that, have a great week. Bye. Bye.